Hello everyone, and we're going to move on to the next topic, which is going to be a walk cycle. Now, ideally, what we'd want to do for an actual walk cycle for our character would be something in the realm of what we have over here. Basically taking a character and, and uh, moving them in these main four poses. Basically, the first one we would have here is contact, where both feet would be on the ground. Uh, and something to kind of keep in mind when you're doing a walk cycle, whenever one limb is forward, the opposite uh, sides limb will also need to be forward. You wouldn't want them to be uh, both this hand and this arm forward at the same time, as it just wouldn't look very good. So uh, basically, again, you'll just try to to just uh, move the one on the one side and the other side on the other, like so, kind of crisscrossing in a way. So this would be potentially your first pose, and it's going to be at its midpoint. Recoil is basically when you're going to put all your weight on one limb. The uh, passing is going to be when the leg goes from one side to the other. The high point is when the uh, limb is going to be at its highest. Oh, sorry, the person's going to be at their highest. And it's going to be right before the contact again. Now, the neat thing about a walk cycle is once you've done the one, uh, basically you just do all the poses but in the opposite direction, like what we're seeing over here. But if it's done correctly, you could actually go to that first position that you're in, uh, basically making it so that you could repeat that motion again and again and again, hopefully making the process way easier. Not just that, but uh, it is something that could be repeated over and over again. So once you did the one, you pretty much could repeat the motion as many times as necessary. Or alternatively, if you use an animate or other software similar to that, uh, it should be able to repeat that automatically. And again, I'm going to show everyone how you can approach that uh, automatically here. So we're going to go to animate at this time. Oh, by the way, if you need the example of this, uh, if you go to Google and do a search for walk cycle, uh, you'll find uh, this basic walk cycle that you have over here. Uh, if any of you do have the ability to uh, draw with a Wacom tablet or something like that, and you really want to give yourself a little bit of variation, you can also do a search for Preston Blair. Oh, Preston Blair. There we are. And he actually has a whole library of different walk cycles you can do. Regular walk, double bounce, strut. And you can even do elements like run, jump, and a bunch of other ones over here too. I wouldn't recommend doing these for the rig that we have. This is more if a person's just going to be doing a very simple uh, walk cycle and so on. But if you do have the ability to actually do proper drawings, this is definitely a more agreeable way to go. But there might be some situations where doing a full walk cycle might not be necessary. And just having them uh, have the illusion of moving could also work pretty well for our advantage too. So... Anyways, I'm just going to get this reference up and at the ready so I can take a look at this again and again. And uh, once again, I am going to copy my main just by uh, right-clicking and duplicate. Again, you don't want to, I'll just type this as walk, to use the original if you can help it. Basically taking a walk like what we have over here would be more ideal. And I'm going to double click it because, again, this is a walk cycle. I'm going to want to move for a couple seconds. Okay. Now, uh, for our walk cycle, just to give you an idea of how we're going to approach this, we're only going to be basically seeing uh, the legs upwards. We're not going to have to see the whole body for this walk cycle we're doing. We're basically just doing like a medium uh, shot, possibly a medium close-up. Uh, for this. So don't worry about actually animating everything. We just need some of the basic areas. Now I would like to try and maybe add a little bit of head movement to that. So I'm going to get all the facial elements as well, but we'll get to that. Okay. So uh, again, what I would do is first of all, uh, you're going to need everything here. So uh, I'm going to put this, let's see, I'm just doing some quick calculations on here because ideally we want to make sure that we have enough frames for all our poses. So basically, if we're doing the first pose uh, and we were going for a full, let's just say, uh, one second, we want to make sure that uh, our first pose could be like uh, the contact and then the recoil. So we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, areas for our poses and such. So potentially with, with the nine, if we have this over here. So 
let's see here. So the first four frames would be one, the next four frames would be uh, the second area, the next four frames after that would be 12, so that basically one, to, so that so that would basically be about uh, 12 frames right there, and then we could basically use the other 12 frames uh, for the first second, with an additional four frames uh, after the first second over here, uh, so that we can basically get that whole looping option. So we're going to need frames going all the way to frame 28, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to hit F5 for all those sections. It is going to get a little weird, but it will be fixed immediately. Okay, so that's all already. Okay, so if I'm doing a contact, oh, I actually have to add the keyframes for where we need them to be. Again, I'm not going to need to get the lower legs over here, so I'm not as concerned about that. Uh, I am going to try and get a good chunk of the other body parts, though. So I'm just going to use the quick selection over here and select all the parts that I'm going to need. It would be a good idea to make sure your time slider is at the very beginning, though, which it, in my case it is now. Uh, so let's see again. The uh, only area that I'm not going to select right away is the head. There is a reason for this. But with all those areas selected, I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to choose Motion Tween like I did before. Relatively easy peasy there. And, uh, yeah. Now, the issue that comes up is going to be the head. I had a bit of an issue earlier, and I'm going to show you how you potentially could fix it. So if you think the head is going to be animated, try to select everything there with the exception of the head in this case. Uh, you can basically, once again, go to Insert, Create Motion Tween on those. There's no problem. I'm going to try and get the head again. So I'm going to Insert, Create Motion Tween. Now, you might see a little bit of a pop-up after you do that. Now, this is basically just letting you know that there is uh, some strangeness going on and that it has to be turned into a symbol uh, to be able to tween them. In this case, you could just hit yes and it should work okay. It's one of those weird things that sometimes happens where uh, if you have multiple elements in one object, it's going to ask you to kind of turn it into a symbol yet again. Uh, but again, as you saw, it didn't take too long, barely an inconvenience, as uh, one celebrity says. So, uh, but yeah, now that that's done, everything can be animated with, with little problem. So, getting back to my reference here. So, I'm going to get my contact first, just because I think that would be simpler. So, this is basically how this, this leg would look. Uh, then basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this one a little bit more forward. I'm going to move this one a little bit back. Try not to go too crazy with this if you can. And if you're noticing certain areas are getting a little out of joint, literally speaking, of course, uh, you can take a moment to move these a little bit more back into place, as sometimes that might be the situation. There we are. And as I said, uh, we basically have our one foot forward. And it's basically being the opposite of the hand that's currently forward over here. OK. Now, as I said before, uh, eventually we will we'll need to get back to this pose again. So that is something you will have to consider. And I'm just doing one. Oops. That is an undo. <laughs> and you potentially could actually copy these after the fact, but uh, we'll, we'll just give that a try a little bit later. Okay, so uh, once again, if we're going to do these motions, uh, we have the first frame down. Awesome. So we're going to the next frame, and that is going to be the recoil. Now, don't worry too much about moving the body yet. We'll get to that. 
But what I'd like everyone to try and do is try and get to the main positions. So if this is the contact, the recoil is going to just have these go a little bit more, this one a little bit more forward, this one a little bit back, uh, this leg kind of uh, going upwards, this one uh, going forward a little bit more. So once again, on this frame, I'm going to move everything that needs to be moved. So again, if necessary, you can basically just hold shift to make uh, the keyframe, then shift it back. And that should hopefully uh, make the motion that we need. Uh, again, that area is going to be a section we're going to need to do. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, the upper body over here, so I'm not going to worry about that. This one's going to go a little bit more forward. Again, we're not moving the shins because we don't have to worry about that as much. There we are, those two. This one we're going to move slightly up. This one we're going to move slightly up. And this one I'm actually going to move up a little bit like so. And same thing for these areas. Move that up. Move this in. And again, this is the hand that's going back. That's why I'm moving it this way. Yeah, there we are. And once again, I'm just taking a look at this. So I'm going to move this back slightly. Cool. So I think I got most of the areas. So I'm going to just make sure there's no shenanigans going on with the animation. Now that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go forward eight frames. Yep, there we are. And go to the next pose. So the next one is more of a passing. So each of these would be more of in a neutral stance. That's what I'm going to be shooting for. I usually like to, to animate the legs going upwards, or at least the center of mass over here going upwards. I'll leave that up to your own discretion, although I do want to get a little closer. Okay. So again, this is going to be more of a middle position. This is going to be more of a middle position. As this leg is going to be going more forward, this arm is going to be going down a little bit. I'm going to have that hand kind of swing back a bit. I'm going to have this arm go back. Oop. Have this arm go back like this. And I'm going to put my head back in more of a neutral position. There we go. I'm going to test to make sure that the motion is still working good. Because sometimes if you do rotations, they can get a little bit strange. So it's a good idea to keep an eye on them. And make sure that you animate every part you have here. As that can kind of backfire you on you in ways you would not expect. Yep, just rotate it forward, rotate it back. As again... I'm going to need this a little bit later, so that's why I'm just doing some pre-rotations here. But I'm not going to worry too much about the other parts just yet. Okay. Okay, so i got the one, two, three, and then the next one would be the high point. So this is where uh, this leg would go a little bit more forward. Uh, this... Uh, the corresponding arm would go a little bit back, and that's how that part basically works. So, again, if this was the foot that was more forward, this one would be the one that starts to go forward in this case. So, let's see. So, I'm bringing that a little bit more forward. A little... Oop, do not scale these. You do not want to scale these. Back... 
This one's going to go a little bit more forward. This one's going to go a little bit. But don't overdo it, as sometimes these uh, rigs have a tendency to get a little bit rotation happy, is the best way to say it. And if it ends up being a little too much, it can cause some pretty big problems. So it's always a good idea to test. So, whoop. And uh, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go to my reverse contact. So that basically means this leg is going to go more forward. You may, might need to move it a little bit. Yep, there we go. This one's going to go back a little bit. This one's going to go forward a bit more. This area is going to go forward a bit more. This hand's going to go forward a bit more. And again, test it just to make sure. Because again, if a rotation gets weird, it's much easier to fix it now. Little confession, I actually had to restart this, uh, this uh, lecture a little bit because there was some weird shenanigans going on. But it looks like most of those parts got fixed. Emphasis, emphasis on most of these areas got fixed. If it's at its high point, uh, this area is going to go down a little bit. And let's see, the lower aim far, I'm basically going to bring that a little bit further back. See if there's any other shenanigans that are going on. Nope, just basically bring this here, bring this over, just to make my keyframe. And let's see. So that the next frame would be 16. Again, this is going to go the furthest back it can. This is going to go forward. And you know, it doesn't need to go forward anymore. Uh, let's see. And again, test it out to make sure there's no weird rotations, as they can pop up in weird areas. Okay, looks like it's all going good. Uh, let's see. Oop. I'm undoing what I just did there. Okay. And let's see here. I'm just trying to make sure I get the other side. The hardest part about this is when you have arms that are farther away, it does make it a little bit more difficult to select. Ah, here we are. And arm far. So now I'm going to be doing the passing yet again. Oop. Almost one area I almost forgot. Reason why I'm just doing, uh, I'm going to be doing the moving up and down last because I just want to make sure I get my main poses. So if that's my contact, uh, I'll be going into my, let's see, just want to make sure I have all of them. I think, so yeah, contact. Then recoil, then passing, then high point, then contact, so the next area, which would be frame 20, 
which would be recoil. And then I would bring that back. And of course, test to make sure it works OK. So far, so good. And I'm going to zoom in a lot because I want to be able to rotate this, but yeah, there we are. There we are. There we are. And yeah, I think I got all the parts over here. Just double checking my hand. Yeah, I do want to bring that back just a bit. Okay. And yeah, the other side, which is all the way down here. Okay. And again, I'm just basically doing some placeholder keys. Again, if I rotate it too much, I'm probably going to end up breaking the arm, so I definitely don't want to do that. But I think I got everything. Oop. And I want to put the head back in a more neutral position. Yeah, there we are. And now that that's done, where we have the contact, we're going to go into the passing, which is basically going to bring both our limbs a little bit more in a neutral position. So that'd be frame 24. That's basically going to put this limb over here, this limb over here, this limb over here. Cool. But test it out just to make sure that everything is going the way they're supposed to. Looks like they are. And because this is the passing, this would start to go up, so I'll fix that head in a moment. Uh, yep, I'll be bringing back the upper arm, finally. Oh. Yeah, the hardest part about this is make sure you don't scale. I'm sure the question would be, why not? Because that would be bad. Kind of cross the streams bad for the Ghostbusters fans over here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, some weird stuff is going on. Oh, let's see. And that's why sometimes it's a good idea to double check this stuff too, because sometimes what you think might be working out okay might not be. Okay, cool. All right. That's 24. Looks like I might have to actually add a couple more frames. But let's see. This is the contact. This is... Oop. And this... Yeah, just making sure I got my right one. So this is the, con the contact of the other side. So one, two, three. So it looks like I might actually need a couple more frames, but I'll at least be able to get the last frame over here. So if I'm trying to get something like this... And that basically means that I need to basically bring this leg forward a little bit, this leg a little back, this arm a little forward. And I think I might need to zoom in a little bit on this so I could see that easier.
I think I got it all, except I'm just going to move this one a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Since that one's going back, I'm just bringing this back slightly. Okay. I'll be going back for the head to basically try and fix that up. Okay, so upper leg close. Okay, main controller once again. Just got to bring it back and forth. Oops. Make sure you're on the right frame when you do it, by the way. There we are. Okay. And I'm hitting play just to see this. So now I need to get into the other pose uh, right here. So I'm going to see if I can, oop, before any fur, any, go any further, I'm just going to save my progress. I'm going to call this uh, walking. It's been a while since I've saved, and considering it's almost 30 minutes, yeah, definitely do not want that. Okay, and let's see, I'm on frame 28 right now, so it's basically got to be 32 that I have to put all these on. I'm going to try to just insert my frame. Ah, fantastic. And I'm going to try, emphasis on the word try, to see if I can actually just bring this first frame over for each of these. Now what I'm doing here, in case you, uh, you're wondering, is I'm basically highlighting that first frame and I'm just bringing that over to the other side. So once I just give it a quick click, I'm going to click and drag it to the other side. That should make an instant copy. Emphasis on the word should. And I definitely would recommend checking it just to make sure. I'm just bringing it to the other side. And the whole purpose of me doing this, by the way, is I want to make sure that my keys are consistent. Because again, if I'm having this loop, I want to make sure that it's, well, doing it accurately for, uh, for the best way to say this. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Again, if you accidentally uh, select more than you mean to, the undo button is your friend in most cases. Now, the best way you could test to make sure it works is you could try to use the repeat. And I could see that eh, I might have overdid it for the bringing this area up. But for most of our purposes, it looks like most of the work that we're doing came out pretty good. A couple things that could be probably tightened up a little bit, but overall, I'm having a walk cycle that's pretty loopable. But again, that's why we're basically having, oh, that's why we basically copied that one frame so it can loop indefinitely. So I'm gonna try and clean this up a little bit But I want to make sure I do this uh, on my own because I don't really need to worry too much about cleaning this up in front of everyone here. Just try to uh, actually make it look like you're going into the main poses, at least from the knees upwards. Anything below the knees, don't worry about that yet. Uh, if you want to try and give it a, a try to kind of work with the lower parts, you're more than welcome to do so. But at least for the walk cycle we're doing for now, it's going to be knees upwards. So just try your best. Uh, try to get a motion similar to this. And in the next video, what I'm going to show is we're going to uh, take a, make a background with some procedurally made uh, elements. And that basically means we're going to make a small little library of different props and basically make a background symbol with just those props. And uh, once we're done with that, what's going to happen is we're going to make that move 
uh, to make it look like the character is doing a walk cycle. So this will come all together very shortly. So I will see everyone on the third and hopefully final video. And uh, yeah, just give this a try the best you can.